Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some of the changes brought about by the interesting new beta 1258.1. Now most people probably are familiar with the tiny update at this point which brought in a stupid number of new features into command. And uh, today we're going to be taking a look at this little update which actually adds some really profoundly different things to the game. Now the first one of these big updates is, I'll go ahead and demonstrate this so that you can kind of see exactly what I'm going at here, is the fact they have changed the way that command and control on ships works. Uh, conventionally what you have is if you click on a random ship and you click on you know, my OSIK here, OSA by the way means WASP in case you were curious. If I scroll down here you're going to see this thing has my little UDA cycle. I have a detection, it takes about 15 seconds, and targeting uh, pretty quick, about 2 seconds for evasion. But one of the things you're going to notice is we have this new feature called Combat System. Combat system refers to how fast the ship can respond to new information. So in this case, this is how long it takes them to engage something. This is how long it takes them to actually start the process of engagement. So let's demonstrate exactly how sketchy that really looks here. So I'm going to go to my sensors window. I'm going to go ahead and flip on this radar. Unfortunately, this is an APY-1, which uh, for some reason, oh, that's right, because this is the old version of the Sentry. You know what? Let me get something a little bit more modern for this then. By the way, we're in the Cold War database for today, just to make things a little bit easier for me. Let's grab the uh, Hawkeye. I think the Hawkeye does have some surface capability. Otherwise, so help me, I will go get myself one of the uh, P3s. I know that'll work. Let's go flip that on. Is it going to give me what I want? Yeah, it is. Cool. You stay here. Ah, ha, ha. Let's just give it a few moments to go ahead and acquire interesting targets. There we go. So we have here, it's an enemy ship. And I'm actually going to switch teams real quick so I can kind of show off. And we have ourselves the DD-445 Fletcher. Remember, Fletcher equals Destroyer, Destroyer equals Fletcher. I'm sorry, but that it, it can't do anything about it. So if I click on the ship uh, database entry now, you're going to notice that it has a combat system, CS Generation 1, which means it will not be quick at responding to targets. But notice its total UDA is about 15, 16, 17. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip on his radars here. You know, why not? Let's go shut that down. Radar's turned on. By the way, this is how you do this now. Uh, this doesn't work as well as it used to. Like, I, it, I, I, whatever, I'm not even going to worry about it. I just click the switch when I want the radars to turn on now. So we instantaneously acquire this guy up here. Now keep in mind, the radars are turned on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself my OSA here. <laughs> Whoa, let's see, one, two, three, four. This is such a rude number of these things to fire. By the way, if you've never actually seen this weapon, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open it up real fast so you can take a look at it. The sticks, it looks like somebody took a MiG-15 and chopped the cockpit off of it. It's the funniest thing. So we're going to fire sticks. Uh, the sticks is going to get going. It's an SSN-2 a P-15. Like I said, literally, it's a MiG-15. It even has it in the name. So this guy instantaneously acquires this incoming vampire. Now, keep in mind, if we were missile arm, like we had a Talos or something for like a 1960s or 70s, I'd be sitting there scrambling to get ready to fire. I'm going to go ahead up time a little bit. My sticks are coming in. They're coming in. I've acquired them. My radar has detected them. Now keep in mind the Fletcher is more than capable of engaging a stick. So sticks is a slow moving MiG-15. So watch what happens. Nothing. Now I pause because I want to show you why nothing happened. It is because our crew, even though we've acquired, is now scream cranking knobs, turning buttons, pushing things, calling on the phone, getting waking up the gunners, getting those guys ready. They're trying to acquire the target. They're looking for the target. They're trying to coordinate where it is. They're trying to do all these other things. And as a result, it's going to take me another 217 seconds before I can get a shot off, even though I have the capability of doing so. So I sit here just a little bit longer, and I'm about to use... Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Fletcher. Oop, oh, that's right. Those are the old missiles. Those things, I swear to God, they've never, ever, ever exploded the first time. Oh, and now I don't have a Fletcher. Oh, my Fletcher, it's gone. So you can see now these older ships with the older CIC are basically worthless against anti-ship missiles. And I don't even want to discuss the implications that's going to have. But let's show you what happens if you have something slightly more modern. So let's go grab myself a surface ship. And I'm going to grab an FFG. Of course, you know which one I'm going to grab. The Oliver Hazard Perry. Boop, boop. Scrolling down here, you can see we now have Generation 4. So watch the difference here. So we're going to grab our parry. We're going to order him to do basically the same thing. And then we're going to shoot more sticks at him because I'm such a mean person. Go ahead and click that. Radar's on. Boop. And like I said, at some point, they'll probably just get rid of this because it doesn't mean anything anymore. Let's switch back over here to blue. Let's go ahead and grab my OSA. You did a nice job, OSA. I'm replacing you with another OSA. <laughs> and like I said, you can't replace an OSA without another one. Ooh, you have the ER model. Sweet. Grab this guy. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go ahead and unpause. These two guys can be deleted. There he is. We've already acquired the fig. Uh, we probably acquired him with something else, though. Ah, bell tap. Yeah, I picked him up directly. And there he is. Unpause. Shift tab. One, two, three, four. 
All right, so now, as you know, a parry is equipped with a little tiny one little hee hee missile up in the front wind. Uh, for those of you not seeing a parry, actually, we can probably call now. We have to go flip it over to his side, which we're going to have to do anyway because we're going to have to watch the Osas take a shot here. So the parry, believe it or not, has this little teeny tiny missile launcher in the front, but it has a quicker reaction time. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. In just a moment, we're going to acquire that missile. And there's the missile. So I'm going to grab the parry, lock onto that missile. It's a vampire. And notice my total time here is 50.4 seconds. So the missile's coming in. The missile's coming in. I'm acquiring. My guys are tweaking knobs. Um, they're acquiring the missile. And look at that. Missile on the way. But notice my missile, of course, is engaging the basic Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> not these vampires. Now you're probably saying, wait a minute, I thought you said that this was a faster system, it should be more capable. Well, the thing here is you have to remember that this particular weapon is traveling a very, 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 very high speed, which makes it very difficult to acquire. And if you actually look, do you see how we lost contact with the weapon for that moment? So right now my crew is basically scrambling to go ahead and lock onto this sucker. Now it's in visual range, so it should be a little bit quicker. So I have 3.1 seconds before I can get this thing off the rail here. So let's go ahead and switch to 3D view so we can watch the last couple moments. Um, oh, what is it? Red Storm Rising. I forget the name of the movie. Clear and Present Danger. One of those, like I said, always comes to me later on. So there's my parry. There's my vampires. You can see they're not the seascaping variety, but they are traveling basically Mach 1 right now. So our parry is locked on. He's in range. Sea Wiz fires automatically. Sea Wiz does not have the same limitation as far as uh, that goes. And that one's gone. Okay, nice, nice. I don't know what happened to him. Apparently, he's just sort of chilling. Sea Wiz is going at the next one. Sea Wiz is going at the next one. Fire, 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 fire. No! Safe. All right, next one's coming in again. Uh, because we have that Sea Wiz that doesn't have that incredibly tight Oodle limitation here. Pause. And, of course, I'm going to show you real quick what we have. Let's click on him. Shift 1. Now you can see that we're still waiting for this thing to engage. Because, unfortunately, all my weapon directors right now are busy uh, basically guiding uh, weapons onto this one. Here comes the next one. Oh, we got another one that uh, petered out. And here comes the last one. Oh, my gosh. Here it comes. And we're firing away. Firing away. Uh-oh. This is going to be the one, isn't it? Nice. So what happened here? Well, what had happened is, remember how this guy fired a bunch of missiles at this guy here, and you can see he's still tracking them? Unfortunately, that gave up his ability to engage the things that were coming at him that were a bigger danger. So again, this is a common issue with these older style craft. And anybody who's ever played Dangerous Waters as the frigate can tell you how difficult it is to get two SM2s in the air at the same time. It's quite a process for those of you not knowing. So you can see immediately that we have brand new strategies that we're going to have to start to employ in order to engage things. I'm sure you probably follow the news about certain ships getting sunk in certain black seas and you probably start to realize why that probably happened so let's take a look at some of the other things another thing that's very interesting if i click on my fletcher i'm right clicking yeah they fixed it so if you go to game options now again have this new option this is enable right click mouse move order i have disabled that because that made me positively insane so i'm glad i got rid of it but there's another thing you probably notice on our screen here and that's these little kind of x's these are trails so if i actually switch back over to the other team real quick pop over to these guys you'll notice now that this little guy here who's running for his life away from this missile that's been launched at him you'll notice he's got a little trail that actually shows where he came from if you go to map display you can actually dial these in uh, one thing i warn you about the trails by the way is anything you turn on is going to be on. I know that sounds obvious, but the reality is, do you see how it has this little trail here? Any weapons I fire are also going to have that trail, which means if I fire like 500 weapons, it's going to get really messy, and we'll demonstrate that in just a minute. So I'm going to take the parry now. I'm going to delete you. Uh, thank you for your contribution, Perry. You did a wonderful job of demonstrating how lethal anti-ship missiles just got. Like, I... <laughs> That's the sound I have to make to that effect. Yeah, good, good, like articulating that Google Commons. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the next new feature. And this to me is probably the coolest feature that they've released in a very long time. And now we have the ability to, at 11, pick what time we want our bombs to drop on a target. Now, I know you're thinking going, what? Time under target? Time on target rather than under. Under would be a little weird. Time on target, we finally have that capability. The answer is yes. So what this does is this gives you the ability to select what time you want your strikers to hit. So I'm going to go ahead and activate this mission. And I'm going to come here and pick a time. Let's see here. I'm going to have my guys hit the target at uh, 9 a.m. Now, there's something I've learned from playing with this. Your tar missile or your aircraft will always be a minute late. Now, I mean, this is just from basic back of the envelope kind of uh, calculations here. But for whatever reason, at least for me, if I want them to hit at 9, I always have to do 8.59. So 8.59.00. Zero, zero. Whoa. That would have been really bad. There we go, 8.59 and 00. Keep in mind, we're here at GMT, so it makes it very easy to do these calculations. So that's it. 
So right now we now have a time on target and that's all I have to do. My mission, by the way, we have a bunch of F4s and we have some uh, escorts as well. Everything's been pre-programmed. By the way, check this out. You can do flight sizes that are custom. So if you want to do a 48 bomber run, you can now do a 48 bomber run. <laughs> One thing that I really wish they had here that they don't have yet, and I get the feeling it's probably in the works, is we can't define what type of formation that we're actually going to use. And now there's another button down here. <laughs> we'll deal with that button once we launch. So now I'm going to go ahead and unpause. Give it a little bit of time to pass, a little bit of time to pass at F11. Now notice that these guys here, these F4 Phantoms, uh, we're all ready to go. Now watch what happens when I press ATO. You notice that this is completely blank. You know, I've got nothing special going on here. Everything's completely blank because nothing is currently in the air yet. Until the mission actually gets set off and it actually gets everybody rolling here, you're not actually going to see anything in that particular thing. And again, like I said, this is so wild that we can do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward time a little bit. And you'll notice that this new flight plan has appeared on my screen. This flight plan is the flight plan that will get my tar um, aircraft, my strikers, on target at the correct time. Now, if I tap F11 again and click on ATO, check this out. There's all of my flights ready to rock. Check it out. You can pick tasks. You can set them to different types of escorts. Or we can do a tar cap if you want instead of a fighter sweep. I mean, you can set them all right here. And then we have my strikers. You have all the different types of flight plans. Obviously, this isn't going to do anything yet. They have the uh, flight call signs. You can come in here. You can delete flights. You can create new flights. Everything is now here. I'm so glad they finally added this a feature. But take a look here. We now have a takeoff time. The computer automatically calculated what time these guys need to get airborne in order to strike my target at exactly nine. Remember, I knocked a minute off of it. So watch what happens now. So we're going to hit 843. Well, not quite 843, 843 in XY seconds. And we have our first flight in the air. Also, I like this little donut. I love it. So this guy is now going to fly into this holding pattern. Now, remember, I intentionally chose a very, very large formation here in order to simplify my logistics. So here comes, uh, I believe this is one of the escort groups. Yep, that's my escort group. There's my other group of escorts. And oh, look at all the don't. See, this is one of the things I was warning you about those new trails. Um, I almost wish you could do trails by formation rather than trails by it. Now notice, look at how cluttered the screen got. So this guy is now airborne. This is my second group. Now the way they programmed it, at least from what I've observed, again, I could be completely wrong here. Well, look at that, I'm leaving contrails. Is the fact that now when these guys strike, they strike one minute apart. So I'm actually going to disable those trails because I'm hearing my computer getting ready for takeoff itself right now. Boop. Let's shut that off real quick. So what you're seeing here is these, this group here, this will be my first in at exactly nine o'clock. They're going to run through a holding pattern. Meanwhile, the second crew, do you see how they're in a one minute later holding pattern? So they're going to leave this holding pattern exactly as this group starts to start their strike. And if the math is correct, everybody will get there at about exactly nine o'clock, like I promised. So they're leaving the holding pattern now. Notice both groups of strikers are on the way, and notice my escorts are escorting. Now, this will be interesting because it's about to make a lie. No, 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 I think I was right. I think I was right. Okay, remember, I called for a strike at 8.59, but like I was saying before, it always seems to be about exactly one minute early. So now the question is, is it when the bombs hit the ground at 9 o'clock, or is it when we're over the target at 9 o'clock? Now, according to from what I've seen so far, it seems that you're going to be roughly dropping at exactly 9 o'clock. So we got about... You can see I'm just a little tiny bit late. And anybody who's ever done anything in the Air Force knows two minutes is considered accurate. So we're well within Air Force standards as navigation here. So 9-11, 9, 9, 10, 9 look at everybody's uh, circling under the target. Remember, these are very large formations too that tend to slow things down. And look at that. 30 seconds late. Look at that. <laughs> Sorry, that is a maniacal laugh. Do you have any idea how long the folks in command have been waiting? Oh, oh. <laughs> how are you doing there? Do you have any idea how long the folks who have been playing this game have been waiting for the ability to be able to uh, dump that much stuff? Um, apparently, my trails have not disappeared. That's a little weird. Let me go back to map display here. I thought I shut that off. That was a little weird. Well, oh well, at least you get to see kind of a little display here. So you can see that my strikers went in, they dropped their bombs, they're about 30 seconds late. Like I said, that one minute thing might have something to do with how large my formation is, but like I said, it seems to work. And again, at any time I can come to my air uh, thing, I can go over here and say, oh, we want you to do tar cap instead. So I can press these two buttons and you notice it immediately switches them over to a different style system. And like I said, it's so, 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 so cool how that works now. And now the neat thing too is uh, if you have like 100 airplanes in the air, you can all get them go, oh my God, look at all this landing. Now that's what I call a successful strike package. And we're good. 
I believe he had to go around. <laughs> All right, so those are the big changes that we have in 1258.1. Now, there's probably a couple other little things that are different. Uh, one thing that I found that was very interesting is it actually gives you advice if you accidentally do something wrong on a ship. So this might have been a feature from a previous one, but it was just one of those when I saw it, I'm like, oh, cool. So for example, let me go to this, weapons. I'm going to add a weapon mount. Uh, we'll add something nice and I'll do 127 millimeter. Now, let's see here. We want a dual purpose gun here. Dual purpose. Add. It says, you need a mist uh, gun director. Isn't that so cool? So then it even suggests uh, which one it needs. See how it automatically picked the correct one we need. So then I can just pick it like this and say, yeah, I want this one. That's it. And now I have a gun director. What a neat little feature. I'm so glad they must have added that before, but now I actually have one that will shoot properly. But other than that, enjoy.